The next tool I want to look at is the 3D tool or function in Illustrator. Um, Adobe used to have a program called Adobe Dimensions that they sold as a separate software program. And I guess they just decided to discontinue it. And so they um, uh, passed those basic functions uh, into Illustrator and uh, included it as part of Illustrator. So um, first off, create a simple shape. Here you see I did a star. Um, sometimes I'll do it with a letter, like a big bold M, uh, to see this uh, work easily. But here uh, is the star shape, and uh, we're going to go up under Effect, under Effect 3D, Effect 3D in the main menu, and slide over to Extrude and Bevel, Extrude and Bevel. And it brings up the basic dialog box. This isn't the most sophisticated thing in the world, but I think in a very simple and intuitive way, it just does some, uh, I think, pretty amazing things. The first thing we want to do is we want to turn on the preview button right here, as always, so we can see what's going on. And we're going to click the More Options. The More Options, which is going to give us a few more tools to play with. Okay. And then I'm just going to go right down uh, this uh, dialog box and go through these uh, short list of uh, tools that we can use to modify this shape. The first thing is the, the basic uh, little cube up top here. All we've got to do is uh, just click with our mouse, click and drag that, and as you can see, it rotates the shape in space. <clears throat> And very simple, very intuitive. We could certainly um, plug in um, some specific increments into these uh, dialog boxes here, but I think it's clearly simpler and easier and more intuitive to just put your tool on the cube and just do it manually. The next thing going right on down is extrude and bevel. And uh, the extrude depth is going to adjust how thick or wide uh, the image is. So, for instance, I'll just go here, click, and we get a little slider that we can adjust, and we can, as you can see, adjust the thickness or the depth of the object. Okay? The next thing that we can take a look at is uh, over to the right, the cap. Now, right now, uh, it's as if the shape has a skin um, or covering over it. And the other option is to have it appear to be hollow or open, almost like a pipe might be, where you can see inside the shape. And so I'll choose that. And then, once again, as we rotate it, you can see how that affects what we're looking at and makes it almost like a little cookie cutter, literally, um, object. Okay? Then um, let me go back to the regular standard covering. Then we have a series of tools where we have uh, different um, edges, um, a number of different edges, There's some that are more complex instead of the straightforward one that we're using. And once again, we can, if we pick one of those, um, we can then um, adjust how, how high or how uh, intense the, um, the shaped edge um, is. And I'll go back to the none, keep it simple, okay. <clears throat> Then, um, coming on uh, down a little bit further, we have a couple of different uh, sort of looks uh, to the um, object. It may or may not make a big difference. See the wire frame, no shading, and sort of different, a couple of different looks there. And um, then what we also have is the uh, going on down, we have again this little globe and it has a dot on it and by playing with that 
we can affect the lighting of the object. And um, basically, the direction of the light and how it, in fact, affects um, the object. And uh, so, once again, depending on the angle that we have it, depending on the direction of the light source, we're going to get some variation in there. The um, really uh, about the only other significant thing is um, the um, down at the bottom is the shading color, the shading color, okay, and um, with the with the shading color. Um, the default is black, but we don't have to necessarily um, have just the black. Um, I'll click on this, and you can see we have none. We have black. Or we could go to custom. Go to custom. And, um, and then um, click on the little color square right here. The little color square. And this will take us to the picker. And so we can choose a different color for the shading. And of course, once again, you can see it gives us some very different kinds of effects with respect to the image and how it looks. And uh, pretty amazing in its simple form and without needing a 200 page manual, it creates some very um, cool looking um, 3D images. All right. Then um, what we're going to do um, is I'll cancel this.